Hey, what's happening guys? This is Bharat Nagpal for IGN. In and today we are checking out the new flagship devices from four companies: Sony, HTC, LG, and Samsung. Now we have the Sony Xperia Z1, Z1, however you like to call it. We have the HTC Butterfly S. We have the LG G2, and we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Now all these phones recently launched in India, available at prices upwards of forty thousand rupees. and feature one of the highest levels of hardware available in the mobile phone industry today so let's talk about the Samsung Galaxy Snapdragon 800 based G2 devices G2 that we have over here and i'm going to move it around a little bit Xperia Z1 so we have the available with Snapdragon 800 in india the Note 3 is available with Exynos 5 so we'll keep it on sort of a comparative so Exynos 5 1.9 gigahertz uh, chipset over here along with a 1.3 gigahertz chipset so eight cores only four are used at one time so you are either using the 1.9 gigahertz or you're using the 1.3 gigahertz quad core over here at the LG G2 we have a 2.2 gigahertz or approximately uh Snapdragon 800 which is uh again one of the highest levels of hardware that you have available today really fantastic in terms of benchmarks in terms of performance we're going to come back to that we also have the Xperia Z1 same again 2.2 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 800 approximately and it is also the same sort of performance that you would see on these devices over here HTC's flagship is the Snapdragon based butterfly S so let's talk about the butterfly S uh, since this is uh, the smallest in terms of uh, hardware if we do a sort of comparison we'll start off with the butterfly S and we'll move along from there Okay so we are looking at the HTC Butterfly S over here at the front we have a 5 inch display which is a full HD display really fantastic display from HTC it is an super LCD 3 display so capacitive super LCD 3 and you have Corning Gorilla Glass 3 so in terms of the display technology really fantastic great viewing angles uh, exceptionally vivid screen and great levels of brightness as well you also have something which HTC calls HTC Sense UI 5 you get blink feed over here so you get your news and your social feeds aggregated over here you can see we have some news from igan as well uh our tech tip of the day from our facebook page but we'll look at that in just some time if we talk about the cameras on the device 4 megapixel or you have some camera at the back uh, which is sort of the same sensor or the same camera taken from the HTC one which got a lot of uh information uh into the image larger image sensor so you have a 1 over 3 inch sensor and you have a 2 micron pixel size which is fantastic over at the front you have a 2.1 megapixel camera as well both do full hd video now uh, that's a basic look at the HTC butterfly s if we go along over to the right of that we have the galaxy note 3 now the galaxy note 3 has a 5.7 inch super amoled display Now this is again a full HD display and uh it has a 1920 by 1080p resolution but it is a super AMOLED display so versus an LCD uh you have a difference of color but the screen is one of the brightest screens that we have seen on a mobile phone in the market today so it is an exceptionally vivid exceptionally bright screen you can get more details on the review on the Galaxy Note 3 on iGan so if you want to head over to that head over to that on our iGan page and you can get more information on the display tech Samsung is used on uh the Galaxy Note 3. Over at the back of the Note 3 we have a 13 megapixel camera which does do full HD video. Unfortunately, we don't get the Snapdragon 800 version which does do 4K video and unfortunately this one does not have optical image stabilization. Uh so the camera sort of dies in uh, comparison to the competition I'm going to be bringing on in just one second. Over at the front you have a 2.1 megapixel camera again both capable of full HD video the front and the back of the device. Let's move on along to the LG G2 over here. Now the LG G2 has a 5.2 inch display which also has a knock on technology. I kind of failed over there but the LG G2's display is a 5.2 inch display full HD uh, resolution as well you can see that the bezels on the display are really minimal and the front of the device is also really minimal so just a bit of the bezel on the top and bottom and you have more or less an edge to edge display which makes it look really really nice makes it feel like you're just holding a display and not a device itself so 1080p display excellent viewing angles ips technology from LG 
Over at the back, you have a 13 megapixel camera, which does have optical image stabilization. And over at the front, you do have Corning Gorilla Glass, and you can see the device sliding on the table over there. That's because it is a scratch resistant glass technology, and uh, it is really smooth surface. It is a really smooth surface to touch. Uh, so you do have uh, these things happening to the display over here. So the back camera does have optical image stabilization. It's one of the best in-body optical image stabilizations that you'll find on a mobile phone today. It has been ranked really well and a lot of videos will demonstrate that and we are working on a really fantastic camera comparison video uh, that will demonstrate that as well. Over at the front you have a 2.1 megapixel camera which also does full HD video. Now this is running the Snapdragon 800 chipset, the Qualcomm MSM 8974 which is a quad core 2.26 to be precise, great 400 CPU and uh, you have the Adreno 3 30 GPU, which is a fantastic graphics performance uh, unit or a graphics engine or the graphics hardware that we have on this is really, really fantastic. Moving along to the third, uh, to the fourth and final competitor, uh, we have uh, the Xperia Z1. Now the Xperia Z1 also runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 chipset. Uh, it also has a full HD display in the front, but what we are really interested in is the cameras on the Xperia Z1. So at the back of the Z1 is where all the magic is happening. We have a G lens equipped camera on the back of the Xperia Z1. Uh, we have a 20.7 megapixel camera, which allows you to sort of really zoom in without losing uh, the image quality. It's a really fantastic lens and really fantastic camera. And we've been testing it out and we're really impressed with the camera quality. It does do full HD video, despite the fact that we have a Snapdragon 800 none of the comp uh, competition to the Galaxy Note 3 offer 4K video. So only the LTE version or the Snapdragon 800 version of the Galaxy Note 3 offers 4K video, whereas uh, the Snapdragon 800 version of the G2 and the Snapdragon 800 version of the Xperia Z1 in, in theory can offer 4K video, but they don't. So the 20.7 megapixel uh, camera at the back, as well as a two megapixel camera in the front complete the Xperia Z1 and uh, both the cameras on all these devices offer 1080p video. So in theory, all of them are great. Uh, optical image stabilization on the G2 gives it a one up in terms of video recording capabilities as well as image capture. Really great low light images, as well as on the Xperia Z1, you have image stabilization that works really well in video, uh, but in images, it's not so great. Now the G2 and the Z1 have the same chipset. So you have the Qualcomm MSM, 8974 Snapdragon 800 and you have 2.2 gigahertz create 400 CPU uh, along with the along with the Adreno 330 GPU on both these devices. So let's talk about pricing. The Xperia Z1 is available for a price of rupees 44,000 in the Indian market. Convert those to US dollars and British pound. You can see that information over there. And the G2 is available for about 40,000 rupees for the 16 gigabyte variant and uh, about 42,500 42, or 43,500 for uh, the 32 gigabyte variant. The Galaxy Note 3 available for 49,000 for the 32 gigabyte variant. Uh, we saw online somewhere it was available for 45, but I don't know the legitimacy of uh, that. The HTC Butterfly S seems to be the most expensive of the lot, not really easily available. This one's available for 50,000 rupees in the Indian market. Seems really expensive but HTC devices are usually up there when it comes to pricing. Now, there are a couple of other differences in these devices, and I'm gonna uh, easily demonstrate those uh, by putting these in this order. So the G2, the, the LG G2 does not have an expandable storage, whereas the rest of the three devices will take in 64 gigabyte micro SD card expansion. So you have 32 gigabyte fixed, 32 gigabyte plus 64 gigabyte, 32 gigabyte plus 64 gigabyte, and 16 gigabyte plus 64 gigabyte on uh, the Butterfly S, whereas the version we have has 32 gigabyte inbuilt and you get 64 gigabyte expandability. In terms of pocketability and usage, we feel that the G2 seems to be the most portable out of these devices, despite the fact that it has a slightly larger display than that on the Butterfly S, but it's, it's much more thin uh, in comparison to the Butterfly S. It's really easy to navigate this device around. It's really easy to use, really slim and really the rounded profiles fit well in the hand and it feels really nice in the hand to hold. It fits in the pocket really well. 
or really easily as well. So the G2 gets the maximum points in terms of pocketability, and there is no guessing that the Galaxy Note 3 gets the least amount of points in terms of pocketability because of the sheer size of the device. One more thing to note is that the Xperia Z1 and the Note 3, the G2 seems to run away all the time. So the Xperia Z1 and the Note 3 seem to be the most premium looking out of these. The Note 3 with the leather sort of back panel uh, seems to add that premium look. It looks really nice. Uh, I really like the look on the Note 3, this back leather look looks really, really nice. The Xperia Z1 has a full glass finish, so that also gives it a sort of premium look. So the Z1 in terms of aesthetics and the Note 3 in terms of aesthetics win over the Butterfly S as well. Although if you have the grey colour of the Butterfly S or the red colour, you might want to pick that up for the sheer quality of the paint that they have on the back of uh, the Butterfly S. In terms of performance, we saw that the G2 is really fast and snappy to use on a day-to-day -day basis. It does also have the knock-on technology. The screen is really vivid, you can navigate through the information uh, really easily and snappily. LG does put on a Optimus UI on top of the display. So you have a really fast and responsive display. A lot of nifty features. You are running Android 4.2 out of the box. LG promises Android 4.3 really soon, but I won't bet my money on it. This is a fast and responsive UI. You have lots of nifty features in the lock screen, in the notification panel, in the video player as well. So you can check out our detailed video on uh, the G2 and the hands-on video so you can get some of the features. LG has also added nifty features so if you want to jump into the camera you hold down on the volume button and it quickly jumps into the camera as well. Uh, the power button location is really convenient knocking on the screen to uh, unlock the device and knocking on the screen to lock the device is also a nifty feature. So a quick look at uh, why uh, the UI is nice. On Sony, we feel that the UI is sort of dated. Uh, we are not too happy with the UI element over here. Uh, what you're seeing is a slightly dim display because we turned down the brightness quite a lot. So let me turn it back up a little bit again. So uh, the UI is really old. It looks like the Timescape user interface. Sony doesn't call it Timescape anymore, but I am going to continue to call it Timescape. It is not the nicest looking user interface available today. You have really dated a sort of uh, features and elements, fonts and icons look old, but it is really fast and responsive. We're still running Android 4.2 and uh, Sony's added a lot of features uh, to make it a really usable device. You can also have a lot of nice camera features in here as well. Uh, so you have a 60 burst uh, shot mode, which is really interesting. It's called the time shift burst. It captures 60 frames in about two seconds and uh, you can choose between your frames which one you like. You can also broadcast 10 minutes of video to Facebook in full high definition, which is really, really fantastic. So if you're at a birthday party or an, at an event, you want to broadcast that information on your Facebook, uh, you can do that with this device. So really interesting elements that Sony has added along with a bunch of applications and add-on features that you can use. But the overall look of the UI seems a little dated. The Note 3, on the other hand, comes with TouchWiz. It's, again, a very old UI, but Samsung has continued to develop it and enhance it and make it look nicer and nicer with uh, each upgrade. You have lots of nifty features. You have lots of features that you're used to. You have the traditional Samsung Task Manager, RAM Manager, whatever you like to call it. Uh, you have uh, the S Note features and the S Pen features and the Samsung S things that you find inside Samsung devices. You also have the Samsung App Store. So a lot of features that allow you to enjoy this interface. It slows down the device, no doubt. You have a lot of features that slow down the overall usability. A lot of people root their device and put vanilla Android on there and use it, but then you lose the S Pen features. So if you get a way to use the S Pen features, I feel that the UI is really useful. You have lots of apps that are inbuilt. So you have S Health or uh, the Walking Mate application that not only looks nice, but performs really well. Uh, you have lots of really nifty features and the overall UI is really fast, responsive on the Note 3. So you get a big screen, a beautiful looking user interface that you may or may not like. I think that it works really well with the sort of ecosystem that they've built around the device. And it performs well, it performs snappily on this device. It has been slow on other devices in the past, but it works really well on the Note 3. Finally, if we talk about HTC, HTC has come a long way from HTC Sense uh, the way they had it earlier. Blink feed is one of the main reasons the HTC One was such a popular device. It is really a fantastic way to have a home screen 
layout, although it slows down the device considerably and if you do turn off blink feed and if you stay in this page, your device seems to be a lot more snappy and a lot more responsive. But blink feed is something that once you get used to, you can't live without. So in the morning when you wake up, turn on your device, you have blink feed running on, you get all your information in one place, really easy to navigate, really easy to access. With the Snapdragon 600 chipset, blink feed has become that much more responsive and you can see almost zero lag on this device really fluid uh, sort of interactions. I really love the way that they've uh, laid out applications. It's much more cleaner, much more neater. HTC Sense 5.0, definitely a better looking UI uh, than the previous generation of Sense. And then you can also get a traditional sort of layout if you don't want blink feed. So picking out devices from this is really definitely a difficult option or a difficult choice. But I would definitely say that if you're looking for a camera device or if you're going to be doing a lot of photography, the Xperia Z1 or the Optimus G uh, definitely come out on top. The Xperia Z1 with the, the sheer size of megapixel and the sheer size of the lens and the quality of the camera capturing application, that definitely puts it at a point above the rest of the devices. The LG G2's optical image stabilization makes it a boon for video. It has really macro capabilities as well, really nice macro capabilities as well, which makes it a fantastic device for video. The Note 3 becomes a choice for somebody who's looking for a larger screen and stylus input. A lot of people like stylus input and a lot of people will do productivity tasks on the Note 3. So definitely a device that you should pick if you're a businessman or if you do a lot of productivity work on the go. If you think that making presentations and annotations will help you, then the Note 3 definitely comes out on top. Apart from that, it is a larger screen. It is a beast of a machine. It performs really well. You get great benchmarks. You get great gaming out of this. And uh, overall, as a multimedia device, it's fantastic. You can pair it up with the Galaxy Gear. Although I would not recommend that you spend your hard-earned money on the Galaxy Gear, but you can pair it up with the Galaxy Gear and sort of you don't need to pull out this device all the time and you can just use the Galaxy Gear to make phone calls, etc. So you have lots of options with the Note 3 and you get beautiful covers, you get leather uh, looking covers, you get the S view case. Looks really nice, works really well, the Note 3, uh, one of the best options for business folks. The, the HTC Butterfly S I think should be for the HTC lovers because in terms of hardware it's sort of lacking, in terms of price it's sort of really high. Uh, you do have a Gorilla Glass 3, you do have an ultra pixel camera that works really well. You're not looking for that high definition, you're looking for better image quality. So you get that from a 4 megapixel camera with a larger pixel size versus a larger megapixel camera and a smaller pixel size. So it, well, that's what HTC is selling. The performance capability is really nice, they've added a lot of features into the camera. You also have HTC Boom Sound and Beats Audio onto this device, so that is something that people would want to upgrade from. So if you're on, say, a HTC One and want to upgrade, the Butterfly S is the next possible option. Uh, HTC will keep coming out with new devices, that's for sure. So if you want to hold on for some time and wait for another HTC device to come up, uh, you can do that as well. HTC was working on something called the HTC One Max uh, that you could also sort of wait for if it does come out in the near time. But that's a quick look at uh, the four devices, the four flagships that we have uh, that were launched recently. The G2, the Z1 or the Z1, the Note 3 and uh, the Butterfly S. Now we'll be doing individual reviews of these devices. If they're not already up on iGAN, you can check those out on iGAN.in. And uh, you can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash iGAN, YouTube.com slash iGAN TV for iGAN Networks. This has been Bharat Nagpal, giving you a quick look and comparison between the four devices in the market today.